this is a topic that is really difficult, it has been difficult for me. My best explanation of this is we are finite, God is infinite. Take what you can from your infinite side and be glad God is who he is because he is described perfectly as gracious and loving, infinite, unfathomable, and totally on our side. Since all men elect and non-elect are sinners, but since Calvary provided for all sinners, then Christ died for all men. And point one, we looked at in the last YouTube, there is no distinction in Scripture between elect and non-elect sinners in their unregenerate state. So given that there is no distinction in Scripture between elect and non-elect sinners in their unregenerate state, all men are totally depraved. Sounds like Calvinism. Well, they say that, Calvinists do. But, and incapable of providing anything toward their own salvation. But Calvinists go one step further. They are incapable of believing. If I believe the sky is blue, and I'm totally brave, depraved, can I believe the sky is blue? What did I have to do with the sky being blue? See how ridiculous that is? Can I believe Jesus died for my sins? Anytime. Are you totally depraved? Yes. But believing doesn't, uh, isn't contributory. I'm not providing anything for Jesus on the cross. I'm believing in he did what he did. See, so that's gone is that, in that concept. Biblically, we have the capacity to believe. Otherwise, we're robots. Romans 3, 19 and 23. Now, we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, that every mouth may be closed. And all the world, because of the statutes of the law, the requirements for us before God, and all the world may become accountable to God. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Kenneth Weiss says in his book, Have sinned is constitutive or erist. Punctuated action. Presenting a panoramic view of the human race as doing nothing except committing sin. Even the good that all men do is human good contaminated with whatever motivations come out of every man's sin nature and is therefore unacceptable to God. Isaiah 64, 6 says the same thing. I think Romans copies it. Quotes it. So Weiss goes on, the root word which is translated as sinned, as hamartano, to miss the mark, thus to fail in obeying the law, comes short is present tense indicating a constant condition in the present of sinful behavior. Right now comes short. So the verb is ustorio, to be left behind in the race and so fail to reach the goal, to fall short of the end, to lack. Ecclesiastes 7.20 corroborates this. Indeed, there is none, not a righteous man on earth, who continually does good and who never sins. That's what a righteous man does. None of us can say that. Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart of man, his mind, heart meaning mind in the Greek, the, suit, the area in the human body that is the center of decision making and thinking. The heart just pumps blood. So that's figurative for the mind. So the heart of man is more deceitful than all else and is desperately sick. Who can understand it? Psalm 51, 5. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, in sin. And in sin, my mother conceived me. <clears throat> Here is Isaiah 64, 6. For all of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy garment, and all of us wither, wither like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. So, Point two, since Christ came into the world to save the lost, the unregenerate, in other words, sinners. Luke 5, 32. I have not come to call the righteousness 
but sinners to repentance. Point two is going to be answered in point three. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what is, was lost. Us, all mankind. 1 Timothy 1.15a Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ came into the world to save sinners. Now here's the answer to since Christ came into the world to save the lost, the unregenerate sinners. Since that's the case, then he died to save all mankind. For all men are sinners, elect and non-elect. Oh, here's another point, F, point F. The doctrine of universal propitiation does not contradict the doctrine of forgiveness of sin. Oh, people just don't get this. That's why there's so many denominations. Why? Because they just don't read it honestly. Or don't read it at all. They just except somebody else's point of view on it. Compare John John 2, 2. And he, Jesus Christ, is the propitiation, the satisfaction for our, all believers' sins, and not for ours only, but also for those of the whole world, all believers, elect and non-elect. All unbelievers, rather, sorry. All unbelievers. Before you believe, you're an unbeliever. You can be the elect, and you can be non-elect. Compare that, 1 John 2, 2, with Acts 10, 43. Of him, Jesus Christ, all the prophets bear witness that through his name, through the name of Jesus Christ, what he did on the cross, in provision for the sins of all mankind, everyone who believes in him, doing that, dying on the cross. He didn't contribute anything. He made no provision. He simply believed, non-contributory, mental ascent, and he died on the cross for your sins. And what did you get? Forgiveness of sins. You are personally forgiven of how many sins? Every sin that you did commit, are committing, and will ever commit. Isn't that amazing? You paid for them all. Everyone who believes in him has received forgiveness of sins. And by believing, you get the forgiveness. You're already paid for. The key is, are you personally going to get forgiveness in your person, for everything that you are and will ever do that's wrong, and everything that he will then transform you into is perfect in your resurrection body. Everyone who trusts alone in Christ alone to pay the penalty for one's sins, Acts 10, 39 to 42, Ephesians 2, 8, 9. What does that say? Okay, stop a second. Tell me what that says. You've got to know what this says. I can quote this because I've quoted it so many times, because so many people set me up to quote it. For by grace, unmerited favor, you are, having been saved, you have been saved, is okay, but you are, it's present tense, and it's coupled with another verb, perfect participle, having been saved, means permanently saved at a point in time for Present tense results whenever it's present tense, forever. It's emphatic, Paul wrote it, to make sure that you know the moment you believe you have eternal life, he is saved unto eternal life forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. So, for by grace you have been saved through what? Faith. And that, that is neuter, not faith. That faith, you got the gift of faith, yes. And you expressed it, yes. But that salvation, not of yourself, gift of God, not by works. You did nothing to get it. Believing doesn't do something to get it. Believing gets you forgiveness of sins because you accepted what Christ did for you, not what you did for you. So for by grace, you are having been saved through faith, and that salvation unto eternal life, not of yourselves, gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Amazing. Quote that. Memorize it. 1 John 2, 2, examined earlier, which states that the sins of the whole world, past, present, and future, are paid for, does not contradict 1043, which requires an act of faith from an individual in Jesus Christ as Savior in order to receive forgiveness of sins. That's your entire personality 
forever. This is because there is a marked distinction between having one's acts of sin paid for and receiving forgiveness for all of one's sins. Although the penalty for the individual sins has been paid for, whether one believes it or not, thus satisfying God relative to that matter. God's forgiveness of that individual is only received when one trusts alone in Christ alone to resolve one's sin problem. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. Can you quote it? See, and relate that to what was just I just said here. The instant one exercises one's faith in Christ marks the beginning of a number of things for the newborn believer, not the least of which is the reception of the gift of absolute righteousness credited permanently to his account. Romans chapter 3 will do that. 21 to 24. So that he can escape the clutches Oh, yeah, there it is down here. Clutches of the lake of fire and enter heaven's shores when his life on earth is over. So the penalty for one's sins is not the issue. But whether one is righteous enough to go to heaven is. Man has an inherent sin nature which produces individual acts of sin. Romans seven fourteen to 23. Describes Paul and every everyone. Even believers which he must have replaced by God's absolute righteousness before he can enter heaven. Read this wonderful passage, Romans 3, 21 and 24. But now a righteousness from God, a perfect righteousness from God, apart from law, apart from any human doing, has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference. Philippians 3.29 corroborates this. And be found, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from faith and is by faith. Philippians 3.9. I'm going to take a look at that. I'd like to read back before that. Paul writes, But more than that, I count all things to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them but rubbish, so that I may, I may gain Christ, and may be found in him not having a righteousness of my own derived from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith. That corroborates it. Paul got this, and we get it when we believe. Take a look at the All right, let me go back and look at the uh, English here. Nine. Okay, we'll look at nine. And be found in him, not having my righteousness, the of law. Ah, see, I didn't like that. The law. Of law. Law without the definite article means any human doing, including the Mosaic law. So it's all inclusive. Anything that you do. So, not having my righteousness of any human doing that I would do, but by faith in Christ, that's how you get that righteousness, that of God's righteousness on by faith. You have that? So picture a human father and his son. The son commits a crime for which the father makes restitution. The charges are dropped and the son does not have to go to jail, pay the penalty for his crime. The son, however, does not repent, changes his mind about being responsible for his actions, or in another case, he does not accept the fact that the father's actions are sufficient to make full restitution. The father, therefore, cannot forgive the son for his actions, but instead punishes the son, not for the crime he committed, for restitution was already made, but for his attitude of not being willing to accept the father's propitiating, satisfying, satisfying the justice system of the, for the son's wrongdoing. 